Hi thinkers, welcome to the data structures in Python playlist on ThinkX Academy. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about the queues data structure, one of the most important data structures. And it has a wide variety of applications which we are going to discuss today. So first of all, the first important point about queues data structure is that it follows the FIFO rule. And FIFO means first in, first out rule. Right, a very simple and a very basic rule that this data structure follows. And as we all know that data structures are just data and the structure is defined using some rules. So in queues, we have this FIFO rule. So it just says that the first element that goes inside of the queues is going to become the first element to come out of the queue. Now, let me explain you this uh, rule uh, with a very, very simple example of a uh, uh, ticket counter right so let's say there are uh, three people who want to buy a ticket so they will form a queue something like this right so now let's say the first person which is inside of this queue wants the ticket so he will take the ticket and uh, you can see the queue starts from here right so i'm going to call this as the front of the queue and you can see the queue is ending here. So I'm going to call it as the rear end of the queue. So the first person uh, who uh, has got the ticket and now he's going to get out of the queue. So it means that the uh, deletion operation takes place at the front end. Uh, so in case of queue, we call it as a DQ operation, not a deletion operation, right? So DQ takes place at the front of the queue, right? Now let's say we want to insert um, there is another person who wants to join the queue to buy the ticket so he will uh, he's not allowed to join from the front or uh, in between of the queue because that will be cheating so uh, he will just he will have to go at the back of the queue and now i'm going to update the rear to this last person right so this is the status of the queue so similarly if we want to insert some elements inside of the queue insertion which is the nq operation right is performed at the rear end and dq operation is performed at the front end now this has a wide variety of applications that i will discuss very quickly so first of all this type of a system is also known as the first come first uh, serve basis which is hcfs right first come first serve so the first person or the first a uh, resource that comes inside of the queue is going to get served first now this application is used in cpu scheduling so if you have studied cpu scheduling uh, you must have studied the first come first basis and it is implemented using a queue data structure so uh, the first element that uh, comes inside of the queue is going to get served first and that's why it is going to come out first right some are uh, there are some more applications also for example uh, we can use queues as priority queues right by assigning a priority to some function and we are going to discuss priority queues uh, they are also known as heap data structure we will discuss them in detail and then we have some multi-threaded programming right if you have studied java you might or uh, c sharp you must have studied multi-threaded programming in that uh, the thread scheduling is a concept where we use the queues right so uh, these are some of the applications of the queues now let's quickly take a look at how we are going to implement it in uh, python programming or even in any other programming language we are just going to uh, discuss the basic idea right and then you can perform it in uh, any language you want to right so the first step Right, we're going to perform some steps to make it easier for you to understand how to implement the data structure and uh, you do not need to just uh, learn all the steps one by one you will understand them very quickly so first of all we will in the first step we are going to create a queue class right and then we will create an object of this class which we will call as small queue and this object of the class is going to maintain the whole structure of the queue right initially 
I'm going to write here initially when the queue is empty, right? We will create two pointers. The first pointer is the front pointer. And since we want the front pointer of the queue, uh, queue object, I'm going to write self dot front, right? Or we have self dot rare. And initially they are going to both point to the null position or the none position right so because in, uh, the queue is empty initially uh, these two are going to point to the none position now step two is to create a node class right we will create a node class so basically since initially they are null we are going to create a constructor of this uh, queue class which we can do by using init which is the constructor of this class Right, we will create a constructor and we will initialize the front and rear as null. Now we will create a node class which maintains, right, whenever we want to create or add some element inside of this queue, we are going to create an object of this node class. So this node class will have uh, two members, which is the data and the next pointer, right. So basically, we are going to implement the queue's data structure using linked list right there are various methods to implement queues in python you can use collections also but we are uh, not going to use it because they are frameworks and third party libraries uh, we are going to use linked list you can even use uh, stacks also if you're using c plus plus or java and here we are going to use linked list so in a node class we have the data and we have the next pointer right so now let's see how to perform NQ operation, which is going to be our step three, right? We will code all of these in the upcoming tutorials. We will code this whole concept. I'm just giving an idea about how uh, you can do it yourself. And from the next tutorial onwards, we will discuss them one by one, right? So in step three, we have the NQ operation. The NQ operation demands one parameter, which is going to be the data. So let's say I want to NQ1 inside of the queue, right? So initially front and rear was pointing to null, right? So front and rear, they both are pointing to null initially. Now what I want to do is for that case, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to check if self dot rare, right? Self means we are pointing to the to this object q right because we are going to call this function using the object q right so q dot nq so if this object is going to be null right or none then what we are just simply going to say is that the uh, uh, the q is em empty initially so for that what we are going to do is we will assign front and rear equals to temp right and what is temp temp is going to be our node and to the node class we are going to just pass this uh, data which is one right so it will create an object a temporary object which will have one as the data and we also have a next pointer or next reference and we are going to assign self dot front equals to uh, temp and self dot rare equals to temp uh, we can actually do it in a single line by just writing self dot front is equals to self dot rare equals to temp right we can do it in a single line also right so uh, this is this case is when the queue is empty if it is not empty what we are going to do is uh, now you can see that uh, after adding the first element the queue right the object queue will look something like this we have the one inside of this with the next pointer and front and rear is pointing to this object right now let's say i want to i again call the queue function right q dot this one is q dot nq one and now i'm going to call q dot nq let's see we want to insert two here so uh, we just have to change the front and the rear pointers and sometimes we have to change the next pointer of this node 
to insert the element inside the queue right we know that the end queue is performed at the rear end right so what we are going to do is uh, first we check if the self dot rear equal to equal to null so you can see rear is not pointing to null it is pointing to one here so we are not going to change front because front is going to be the same in in case of nq operation we do not change front now what we are going to do is there are two steps and they should be performed sequentially first you will have to perform the first step and then the second step so we are going to assign self dot rare dot next right what is the meaning of self dot rare dot next self dot rare which is this one is pointing to one and when I say dot next, this means that we are actually here at this position, right? So we are going to assign it as temp, right? Now temp will be equal to node 2. So temp equals to node 2, right? So self dot rear dot next equals to temp, which means that now uh, temp is 2 so 2 will come here and 2 also has a next pointer so in now you can see that rear is still here rear was still pointing here we have just assigned we have just inserted the value of temp which is the node 2 we have inserted it in front of the uh, in rear of uh, just in front of this right now, uh, since it is an NQ operation, we do not change the front, we change the rear. So in the second step, I'm just going to reassign self.rear, right? This self.rear should point to temp, right? So I'm just going to write self.rear equals to temp, right? So now rear is reassigned to this position. So after inserting two, you can see the status of the Q object is going to be like this one two next and rear is pointing to two because it is inserted after one and front is pointing to one so that's how we do the nq operation we will discuss the dq operation in a further tutorial and in that also we will just change the front pointer and we will have to make some more reference changes also so we'll see you in the next tutorial thanks for watching